pleasure to present our flagship project, uh, the flagship project of our company, Mega, which is called Stock Podium. So, um, we are uh, mainly a team of four. Uh, I'm the, C the CEO of the company, uh, Chris, which is our mar marketing guy, so also here in the audience. Um, we also have a creative guy and a heavy technical advisor. And also, since a few months, we also have an extended uh, executive board and advisory board in the face of our microseed investor from the Open Fund from Athens, Greece. So, uh, what's briefly uh, is Stock Podium? Stock Podium is an online marketplace for images uh, that allows you to purchase images with clear copyrights. You know, sites like iStock, Photo, Photolia, Dreamstand that you probably have heard or used currently. Um, what, what is different with Stock Podium? Uh, something that we uh, very clearly see as a problem right now is that people spend too much time trying to find the right image and typically they search using keywords. And it's pretty hard to explain what you're searching for uh, when you use keywords. On the other side, you typically have a visual idea of what you're looking for, but you have no good tools to express it. So this is one thing that we want to do better than uh, any other currently can do or in the near future. Um, the overall goal, as I said, is to speed up the process of your research. Uh, of course, we allow people to combine the traditional way of searching using keywords with what we call visual search. Uh, let's take a brief uh, look at the so-called microstock image market. Though the typical price of an image is about $2 for the lowest resolution, uh, it's pretty surprising that uh, for full year 2009 there are more than 6 million uh, turnover in this market and there's an estimate that for full year 2011 it's going to uh, surpass $1 billion per, per year. Um, which are the typical clients of the microstock images? These are everything but the big agency guys. These are people from uh, small and mid-sized creative and web agencies, guys from news agencies, freelance designers, and on the other side are the photographers who submit their professional or semi-professional work for sale on the microstock agencies. Um, more or less, this industry is currently pretty mature, so there is a lot of traction in this market and also there are kind of different players. But uh, how we want to differentiate stock volume um, is actually how we want to uh, stock volume stand out from other competitors. We have a mixture of a few things, and the most important of them is probably our technology. So let's have a look how it actually works. We have an image, <coughs> and we analyze the pixel data of the image, so we extract this kind of color histograms, shape information. Um, how the, how the comp what's the composition of the image, and some important recent addition is that we also aim to recognize various classes of objects that are available in the raster data. Uh, we combine all these data in the so-called feature vector, and we, we do this for all the images in our database, and then based on similarity of these feature vectors that the machine flame friendly way to represent images, we allow the so-called visual similarity search. Some interesting side effect of this kind of technology and the fact that we have uh, a database of a few million images that already have tags allows us to do something that is very interesting and this is what we call the automated or the, the semi-automated auto tag. Uh, once we have an image uh, without any prior keyword data available or any other kind of text metadata available, we're able to suggest the kind of con conceptual keywords that describe the image. And this is pretty handy because uh, it mainly for the photographers who submit their data. Uh, they don't have to spend so much time to draft a keyword image because we can suggest a lot of descriptive keywords that can still allow people who want to use keyword search to take advantage of the keywords. Uh, both the visual similarity search uh, and uh, a close bet of the auto tagging are currently available on our website. And uh, something that was, let's say, kind of coincidence or a gift of faith uh, is <coughs> that some people who get familiar with Stock Podium was also interested in how the backend and how the technology works. So we currently get one close deal uh, about the technology itself. We have a business uh, to business customer of the technology and also we have a few very close deals that are near closing about people who want to use the visual similarity, our image analysis, and the auto-tagging algorithms. 
and a few are more letters in that. So, to take a quick look at the roadmap of the project, actually we launched in November 2010, we launched, or actually we launched, the face of the site where people who were just able to search images, but they were directed to other stock image agencies. Um, in, in late February 2011, we la launched the option on our site where people can buy images directly. Uh, this month, at, at the beginning of this month, we get our first technology customer. And uh, in late July, we are planning to also allow people to start submitting images for sale on the website. Uh, some statistics. For the last month, we have about 95,000 unique visits. Uh, and currently, so far, about 700 uh, active paying customers who buy images on the website. And also, uh, without any marketing effort for none of this, we also have about 200 photographers who just find uh, the website to Google and have uh, shown or have declared their interest to start submitting images on the stock volume once it's ready, without we approaching them. So, to make a, a brief sum up, we believe that we have something that is very cool as a technology, and also we more than two and a half years ago, when we made the inception of this idea, we gathered a team of four people with very diverse kind of interests, so we complement each other, so we also believe that we have a quite good team. Um, what we're looking for, uh, actually we're looking for between one and 1.5 million smart money investment, US dollars, smart money investment. We're interested in finding an investor who is in the media or on the online media market uh, or in the technology and the search technology market. Uh, this kind of investment is going to be spent for two main things. About 60% of it, the brand is marketing expenses for both stock volume and our business to business offering with the technology. And about 40% of this amount are going to be used for the for speeding up the development, the further development of the technology and also of the website. So, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? What is your competition worldwide? Well, we have a few various areas of competition. In terms of the stock photography, you mean, or in terms of visual search, or both? Both. Yeah. So, do you, you want to use a slide? Do you want to use a slide? You have a slide on that. Do you want to go back to that? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, this slide is mainly, uh, though it has some kind of search axis there, it's mainly about the stock market. The main competitor that probably you've heard of is the Iceberg Photo website, which were acquired by Getty in 2006. Uh, he has about 30% market share of Microsoft currently, but for, for better or worse, it's starting to lose market share in terms of other few, uh, enter, not entering, but actually players that gain more and more traction, like one to three and photography. So uh, I can say the market is pretty competitive and they're about five top agencies that have about 80 person, as the Pareto guy said, <laughs> about 80 person in the market. Uh, but on the other side, this means that this is a good um, option for a kind of acquisition by one of these players, or for uh, a kind of business to business offering that these competitors can take advantage of. Of course, this is going to dilute somehow our competitive advantage with stock volume. Um, more or less, we, we believe that this kind of uh, advanced search that allows people to spend less time searching for images uh, is going to, to, to some extent, increase the market and allow people who currently don't, don't use stock images because, for example, they have a hard time finding what they're looking for or it may be existing in the database. So, to some extent, we believe that we also target people who, who still haven't used the micro stock but start using it using stock volume. And to some extent, this was valid <coughs> with, with our main sales so far, because these are people coming from, from Google organic search, so these are people who want to find images, 
but still doesn't use any of the existing stocking providers. In terms of technology, there are maybe if you talk about pure technology uh, companies which are not business to client oriented but only business to business. Um, LTU Technologies is one of the main competitors. It's actually a Japanese company that moved to France and then moved to New York. Uh, we know each other personally. And uh, to some extent, we're thinking also about the kind of competition with them. But uh, something that I think is quite interesting with this project and that we're able uh, and that we happy to explain more in the session after is that it's quite interesting that we make this kind of combination between business to customer product that is top volume, this kind of business to business offering that is for the technology. Because both actually take advantage of each other. For example, the more user feedback we get on stock volume and the more images are submitted there with their quality keyword data from the photographers, the better we can advance the backend technology. On the other side, if we improve the backend technology, it also improves the, the user experience on stock volume. Did I give you to some extent an answer? Some more questions. Yes, I have also a question. I find it quite interesting what you are doing. Actually, uh, uh, can you speak a little bit? Uh, no, I find it quite interesting, interesting what you are doing. Actually, have you? I cannot, I can understand why some companies are actually more interested in in your algorithms. Uh, because have you ever thought that it could be used, for example, for security applications? So uh, things that do not have anything to do with uh, with normal image search. And um, because tagging photos, it's, it's not, I don't think it's such a great effort for something to, 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 to uh, photos between text. But if you think at, uh, for example, at airport, what, what some countries are doing, airport recognition or surveillance uh, or security applications, um, that's my question is actually how, how, how well does your algorithm work? Or is it stable? Is it scalable for many uh, sorts of photos? Or is it really for some predefined models that you, is it, let's, let's put the question somewhere, is it self-learning or do you have some models in it which, uh, some patterns that only that can be served and the, and the other ones not? Okay, thank, thank you for the question. So, let me split it, the answer in two parts. Uh, and starting from the security application. Actually, uh, one thing that with visual search and with visual similarity is that people uh, think of it for, for something like artificial intelligence. I mean, it's very broad job. So you have this kind of detection of defects in the manufacturer, you have the video surveillance applications, you have the face recognition and facial search, and you have the expression recognition, and you have this kind of composition and object search, and the auto tagging uh, to some extent also in this field. So more or less, we, we try to focus uh, with stock volume on the composition search, and to some extent on the object search. Uh, which also allows us to do the auto tagging. We actually have a, a request from a local company here in Bulgaria for a meeting so they can evaluate how this, uh, how good this can be applied for security monitoring applications. But it definitely will need some kind of specializing technology for this because it's not a kind of panacea or something for this kind. And especially for the auto tagging, something that I can say that it's pretty time consuming. And the first close deal that we have on a customer. It actually was a customer, uh, one of the first potential customers refer us to a second and to a third. And we actually first closed the deal with the third customer because they have a very urgent need of gathering images from the web or for kind of specialized blogs. And I'm not sure if I can disclose more than this, but let's say in a particular world, like weddings, they gather uh, images and then they, they want these images to be out of that. Uh, so they were the first because they, they have this large amount of images, and it requires quite a lot of human labor even to, to come up with some kind of mediocre tagging. And as we aim uh, currently uh, position the auto tagging solution, is more or less like this. It's a kind of mediocre tagging, but it can help a lot in the search engine optimization effort, and it can, it can help a lot in saving human labor or using the Amazon Mechanical Turk where you submit images and you're not sure if all of them is going to be tagged and what is going to be posted. Thank you. Thank you. I, I find this, the idea of visual search very, very interesting. Thank I've you. I've seen uh, a similar presentation sometime back in the valley from a company called ECB that was taking this to semantic search. So you have a picture of, of a pair of shoes from the street on your cell phone and you upload it into your 
computer and then you look at how many shoes from Amazon or whomever. Yeah. Additionally, they were using this for medical medical uh, research. So you take uh, the database at Mayo Clinic, for instance, look at various hematomas. You have a new patient who's had an MRI and you're to search that immediately. These are highly, highly sophisticated algorithms. I think the vectors that you have for facial search are about 14 or 16 vectors for facial, for facial search. So if you can crack yeah. You can crack the vector, the algorithm. This is uh, this is the billion billion dollar question. <laughs> Cracking what sense? Yeah. Yeah. To figure it out. It's highly sophisticated. It's very militaristic. For digital imaging or for the ability to semantic search with digital photo. So I go to the museum. I take a picture. I take a photo of that picture. I don't know who the artist may be. Yeah. I load it up and I get that picture and similar photos of that. Yeah, we actually have it, but it's um, more unfortunately it's, it's currently not a billion dollar question anymore because uh, they were a kind of public uh, technology release in about 2007 uh, about this kind of um, automatic detection of important features in an image and also making a description of an image. So for example, if you have this particular picture, it extracts a fingerprint out of this uh, and when you take a picture of something that includes this picture, you can find exactly the same picture and try to do some kind of mapping. So you can find this picture. And we actually have this as a demo for a one advertising agency in Bulgaria, which were trying to do something like original advertising campaign. They're actually one of the, the letters of intents that I've put on the website. So what, what they typically want to do is to, I'll be very good. <laughs> what they typically want to do is to print the kind of unique posters and spread them around the city. So when people go and take a picture of it in a complex background and in different lighting conditions, we recognize which of these template images is actually in the photo and uh, make some kind of gift for them or something like that, depending on the advertising campaign. But actually, this is also something that Google Logos does and they develop. They does this with the acquisition of one of my friends from Edinburgh company, it's called Plinkser. And also they have some kind of internal algorithms. Uh, but it's, it's not that hot anymore. I mean, it's kind of overcrowded in this kind of exact template matching.